welcome back to Endless Moral Works. Today we will be tackling two other very prominent issues on these Audis. The A6 and so the S6 and the S8 with the 5.2 V10. First issue is the torque clamps breaking off inside the intake manifold and the second one is carbon buildup. So what prompted this is the fact that the other day I went ahead and tried to start, start my car and uh, it would start, it would run for about one or two seconds and it would die immediately. So at first I thought it was an issue with the throttle bodies because the EPC light was on and I will insert a clip of me troubleshooting the throttle bodies right here so that you can see how that's done. I'll do a brief voiceover just explaining the process if for someone the throttle bodies are indeed the problem on mine weren't but like I'm saying usually like in 90% of the times once the EPC light flashes for these cars so the 5.2 FSI and the 4.2 FSI it usually is something to do with the with the throttle bodies on these cars as they're fly by wire they are little little moving mechanisms inside so we need this cover that break and uh, it causes them not to open and close properly I will show you now what the symptoms of a issue with a throttle body is so I'll go ahead start the car you can see the EPC light is on and the car dies that's pretty much indicative of an issue with the electronic throttle bodies on this car there are two and I will show you how you can diagnose that for certain the way we'll go about diagnosing which of the two throttle bodies the issue is because there are two is one here and one here because this is an S6 the V8 also has two I think the V6 only has one uh, but the process is the same if you have one so if you have one or more throttle bodies just how to make sure that the issue is with the throttle body is the following so the first thing we'll need to do is disconnect these air intake hoses so these vents on either side so that we can have a clear view of the inside of the throttle body itself so you do that just by removing these clamps on either side this one just remove the clamps pull the plastic uh, tubing out on this side same thing except that there are two little hoses one here and one just underneath it connected to this uh, this plastic vent pipe just pull those out they're very easy to remove just squeeze it on the sides and it just comes to the back I'll go ahead and do that and I'll show you what to do next okay now we have both of the intake pipes removed here you can see the little holes that were connected to the pipe on this side right there and right there and just squeeze them on the side this one as well and they come right off so now the thing that we need to do now is we can now see the inside of the throttle bodies on both sides what you want to do now is get a friend or just hook a camera somewhere so that you can see the inside of the throttle body then you go inside the car you put the key in ignition one or two position and you start depressing the gas pedal and you want to see if either of these gets stuck it could very well be that one of these opens just partially or is completely stuck shut and that's why your car is not working as it should so that's exactly what I'm going to do next I'm going to leave my phone first here on this side I'll go inside the car, I'll put the key in position one or two, doesn't matter, and 
I will start depressing, I guess, but I will see what happens. distinct clicking now I move this to the other side so that we can see if perhaps this is related to this throttle body here Just as I was getting discouraged by the fact that both throttle bodies on this car were working perfectly fine, I found something rather interesting. You guys spot something that is problematic? Yes, right here. As you can see, this here is just hanging by its own and this is what controls the, the torque flaps inside the intake manifold basically these flaps inside when they open and close they move the air from the long runner to the short runner so giving you more torque or more uh, high end uh, so more horsepower at the high end of the rev range so this is what they do unfortunately on mine like you see, can see here this is supposed to be flush and actually controlling the levers inside on mine it's just flapping around i can actually take it completely out as you can see right here it's just just completely completely snapped off so uh this creates a huge vacuum leak and the car cannot run obviously so this is why i'm going to be doing this one more thing uh like some of you may know i don't have a garage so i work on my driveway so everything that you see here is basically being done with common hand tools and on a driveway because I'm be, I will be taking a lot of things off this engine what I've done is I actually parked my other car right here and I'm using the the trunk I put the seats down as well I'm using it as a workbench so I will be taking a lot of the stuff from this engine and just putting it directly here the other thing is that today is quite a windy day so I apologize beforehand for the wind noise to be present in this video like I said I don't have a garage so I don't have the convenience of working inside if I did have a garage believe me I wouldn't be standing here on my driveway where there's a street and there are cars and trucks moving along and all of that stuff and editing takes time and a lot of effort so anyways before further ado let's get to disassembling this engine so the first thing that we need to do is like i've already taken the two beauty covers that are here and here just pull them up put them in a safe location try not to damage them they're very expensive the other thing is we'll need to move this and that uh, air intake pipes out of the way so they have these huge clamps just put a flat blade screwdriver on them loosen them and just pull on this on either side this as well just right up they'll come right out on this side there are two little vacuum lines this right here and another one just underneath right there once you have begun to take this uh, pipe out just swing it up and you'll see them the way to remove those is just press the clips once i have removed the pipes i'll actually show you how to which which clips i'm talking about and how you can press them to put the little vacuum hoses out so we'll start easy we'll start with that and then we'll move to this y-shaped air intake where the throttle bodies are these are the two little vacuum hoses that i was telling you about that are connected to this right here so when this is like 
and this intake pipe is in its place these two hoses are connected to it when you go ahead and pull it up and out of the way like this you will be able to disconnect these with ease so this one you just press right here on the tabs and this one is pretty much the same thing except that on mine it's broken but same deal just depress that and you'll be able to lift this out of the way the next thing is removing the y-shaped intake so this is a little bit more involved there are a couple more vacuum lines this one right here which as you can see it has a single use uh, clamp on it so there because of this I'll be taking the clamp like this clamp right here instead so that I can save this one and I can also see that there are a lot of screws so take this out we have one two and here we have three little dark can't really see it but trust me next to to this little hook there is also another screw right there you'll be able to see it I have one more screw here here right there we have one more hiding and right there is a little bit dark there is also one screw you will you'll be able to see it once you get your head right here so I'll go ahead and remove all of those and if there's anything else I'll let you know. So I managed to remove all of the screws. Here I told you that I'll be removing this clamp but what actually happened is mine separated right here. I'm not exactly sure what these little valves are. I'm yet 99% sure this is not supposed to come apart. But it happened on mine, anyways. That's, uh, we'll call it good enough for now. We'll figure why it separated later. So, there was one more hidden screw, and it was right underneath this piping, right there. There's a little hole, it's super dark, and you can't see anything. But trust me, it's right there. Just bend the pipe out of the way, like this, or remove this uh, hose clamp but you have to replace it later other than that it's pretty much all of the screws that i told you about now uh, you will need to move this out of the way like this it just attaches here i just pulled it up and out of the way this little hose uh, yeah now if you have the original pcv system i don't as you can see i have this little giant hose moving from this valve cover to the PCV valve to this valve cover. If you have the original one, your hose, will, your hose will not be as malleable and as long. What you will need to do is the following. You need to depress these clips on this side. You can see them. Just depress them like that, pull it up. Same deal on this side here then last step you see this little clip this plastic clip right here you need to do the same on it depress it and pull out this will release the PCV hose from the PCV valve itself and from the two valve covers you need to do that because the, your hose will be shortened to be going right on top of this intake manifold the hose is 250 bucks and you don't want to break that just be very careful it's made of plastic and it's probably brittle and it will probably break but just be as careful as you can be the other thing these screws that I took out are T30s they are aluminum and if you are using crappy tools you will strip them and then this will never come out so do yourself a favor and buy some nice quality tools because this is a very big job and you don't want sorry about that guys like I said I'm on the driveway you don't want stripping any of these bolts 
I'm not going to be the one to tell you what brand of tools to use. I really don't care, just make sure they're good quality. You don't want to strip any of those, you'll be in a world of hurt if you do that. Uh, also, some of these screws are really far in and you have a hard time removing them. Like I said, they are aluminum. I had prepared a big magnet. This, to pull them out. They are not, not magnetic, as you can see. It attaches. Okay, so maybe the bottom parts are, but the heads are not. As you can see, I'm trying now to actually get the screw. It won't budge. So try not to drop any of those screws inside the engine bay because again you will be in a world of hurt if you do that so yeah be very careful when removing those use two hands use whatever you decide to use the magnet will not work like i said be extra careful now with this improperly separated but anyway and all of the screws removed you can see that this is already moving the next step is to unhook the two throttle bodies from their electrical connection one here and one right here these throttle bodies are fly by wire which makes them easier to work with because all you need to do is like I said unplug these once that's done you can just lift this entire piece out I'll need both hands in order to unplug those I'll remove this and I will show you what we'll be doing next. I just want to show you how these electrical connectors are attached here. So basically, when this is inside, like this, you can see there's this little ridge. You have this hook, this little, 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 tiny hook that goes inside the connector right here. On mine, when I was trying to pull it out, it broke, of course, because it's 15 years old. On that side, I managed to remove the plastic retainer without an issue, but on this side, it broke. So just be warned that it probably will break on yours as well, if not on both sides, at least on one. But with both electrical connections out of the way, this is for the other throttle body, now we can safely lift this guy up and it seems that it's attached here oh yeah so it is attached to the PCV valve I thought that I'll be able to remove it but you can see there is this this bracket that goes from the throttle body here this bracket goes around and around and there is a screw right here coming from that side that attaches it to the PCV valve I guess that it is also it seems to me that's a T30 I'll go ahead and remove that and then we'll finally be able to remove this and here it is the Y-shaped intake is removed here is this little bracket that I was telling you about as a screw, a T30 screw going from that side retaining the PCV on the right hand side as well uh, as you can see here are all the screws it's a shorter T30, the other ones are all the same size they are for the intake now, with the job of this size I highly recommend when you take parts out and put them somewhere preferably in a safe location put all of the screws back in their place because especially if you will be doing this over the period of a couple of days there is a very good chance that you forget where each screw goes in I have the convenience of having all of this on video but even I will also be doing this as I don't want to need to go through all of the footage just to remember where each screw went. So I will carefully mount the screws in their places like this 
and then I'll move this out of the way okay guys so what is next if you're planning on reusing this gasket carefully pry it out from the pins on either side and remove it it seems to me like it is a metal gasket so it can be reused yeah it is a metal gasket so a little thin piece of metal that has little plastic on either side just put that in a very safe location it seems to me that this can be reused put that somewhere safe I can already feel I don't know if you can hear it yeah those are the torque flaps inside and they are completely broken on mine so the intake we will need to take that apart in order to fix it but before that what we will need to do in order to take the intake out is actually quite a lot so the first things are you have these giant electrical connectors on either side they are they have these little plastic tabs here here they're connected all the way around to the fuel lines they also have little grounding posts here and here carefully remove those and move them out of the way I also see that there are two chem sensors one here and one here unplug the electrical connector for either one it's the same deal like with the connector for the throttle bodies that I've moved out of the way just pull the tab outwards and then unplug uh, there are also several torque screws for so T30s from what I can see holding the fuel lines here and all the way around so you will not need to remove the high pressure fuel pumps that are on either side but you will need to at least remove some of the piping for the fuel so the fuel lines some of them I'm not exa exactly sure which ones I might be able to wiggle this giant intake manifold around them not sure but we'll see there are also these these is actually uh, coolant hoses that go inside here in order to warm up the air that goes in here so inside the intake manifold this is if you have cold winters I do actually where I live we have minus 15 degrees centigrade so I will be keeping those some people choose to delete that and just they plug both hoses together that's also something you might consider if you live in a warmer climate like in southern US or southern Europe or wherever you live it's up to you I'll be keeping those though sorry about the noise guys like I said it's a, it's a driveway so people come and go where were we yeah and right here you can see so we are not going to be tackling these these bolts right here the top ones no no we need the ones that are right here right under all of the the metal piping so carefully remove the electrical connector out of the way like this here it is connected to this piece be very careful I really advise removing this first and so the ground wire I'll actually do that in order not to break it but yeah and then these guys the big the bigger looking screws they're all t30s they just look a little bit bigger there are several along each side i'll go ahead and remove all of that and i'll come back to you with a report on the progress and see what we'll need to disassemble next 
I have moved the giant electrical connectors out of the way. As you can see, we have a lot more room for activities right now. Just tuck it somewhere, try not to strain the wire too much. And again, as you can see, I have put the little retaining nuts on the um, grounding posts on either side in order not, not to lose those or forget that they are there. Uh, yeah. Now, as you can see, so at least from what I can see, we don't really need to disconnect the fuel line on this side. All you need to do is remove this screw right here and this screw right here that actually holds it in place and then we will very, very gently bend it a little bit to that side, like that way. This hole is fighting with me doesn't want to stay in place okay here though we have a fuel pipe going right on top right here and for that I still don't have a actual plan on how to do it I will I really don't want to disconnect any of the fuel lines that we don't need to uh, as the system is still pressurized but we'll see have some some rags in place so just in case that fuel spills so from from what i can see we have to remove so for sure we have to remove this screw this one this one and this one right here there is a very good chance that we might not need to remove this bigger piece of uh, piping but we'll see maybe just a small one i will play around with this a little bit and i'll come back to you I poked around the engine bay and from what I saw there's just simply no way around uh, removing the that piece of uh, fuel line. So what I chose to do is firstly remove them from here, just relieve the pressure a little bit. And the, uh, the next thing would be, so this is a 17, this retaining nut, this one is a 14 mil. I also removed these two sensors, one here and one here, so the black one is belongs to this one and this bigger grey connector goes to the to the bigger one. So this from what I can see this is some sort of a split valve putting the the low sides so splitting it one goes to this pump and the other one goes right there here and this fuel pump this is what at least I think this is so I might be wrong but it seems like a split valve or a or a uh, some sort of a sensor that measures the flow rate of the fuel either way so I'll go ahead and remove this piece of piping completely all I need to do is remove this retaining nut right there from what I can see, this one can stay. I don't think it will be a huge deal if we leave these fuel lines in place. We still though might need to remove this bigger. So this is the return fuel line where it meets right there. There's a big old retaining nut on it. The funny thing is that I'm not sure exactly how I'll be able to reach it. I really hope that I won't need to remove that. I'll go ahead and remove the pipe, drain the fuel that's in this fuel pump. And uh, yeah, we'll see what, what will follow. Some more things that I have done. I removed these hoses, these coolant hoses that go on either side. Was removed in this piece of vacuum line I also removed it from here just so that we have a little bit more space around this now uh, from what I can see we really do need 
to remove this completely now in order to do this so we need to remove the, the return line for the fuel we will need to take out the, the PCV hoses so if yours was original you have probably already done that but I will go ahead and remove the PCV hose on mine and I will probably also need to remove the PCV valve as it's just right here and it's in the way so I will go ahead remove that and hopefully I will have access to remove that fuel line completely and as I can see now we also need to remove the PCV valve because it's connected right here and this flange goes all the way into the intake manifold so we'll need to remove the PCV valve either way the PCV hoses are fairly easy to remove the valve itself isn't as you can see I have swung the valve that way so I just want to show you really quickly there is a screw that goes here but the thing is that it goes from that side so it goes from inside the engine firewall and also one goes right here why is it focusing focus yeah you can see it goes from this side so from the engine bay engine firewall that way one goes right here and one goes right here they are t30s they are quite short this is what the little screws look like then there is a vacuum hose right underneath we won't need to remove that just swing the entire valve out of out of the way it's the hose is uh, is long enough so it can actually even stay like this now the good thing is that we have finally access to remove that retaining nut on the return fuel line as you can see now I have finally managed to remove also that fuel line the space is not tremendous but it's it's adequate you can easily reach and unscrew it I've put in the two retaining bolts back to uh, this piece that was for the PCB just so that I don't lose them now we can finally go ahead and start removing all of the torque screws that hold this ginormous intake manifold to the engine itself once the screws are removed we still have to play a little bit with uh, the front vacuum hoses and the electrical connectors that go to this flap so the upper torque flaps and to the to the lower flaps and then we will be able to remove them uh, as a side note if you have a lot of junk accumulated right here in between the intake manifold and the engine I really don't have a lot but I did have a little plastic piece fly out it's right there just clean that up and remove them you don't want uh, stuff and little bits and pieces going inside the engine as you probably will not know which valves are open and which valves aren't so yeah just clean that up before you uh, unscrew the intake use whatever you find I will probably use some uh, some needle nose pliers in order to get that and uh, yeah. if you have compressed air you have access to that right. even better okay now all of the screws are removed except for that one right there because it is unscrewed it just I can't take it out because it hits the, the fuel pipe but it is unscrewed I don't think it will be a problem I will just take it out when I pull the, the manifold now what we need to tackle is right here all of this here in the front so this will be rather difficult but there is an electrical connector right here this one 
and there are also two lower ones it will be easier for me to show you like this right there you can barely see it that electrical connector right there and there is also one identical on the other side I really can't show it to you but trust me it's right there you can pry it off with the screwdriver just jam it up down uh, jam it from the upside down and uh, you will be able to take it out this will also need to be removed there are some vacuum lines connected to, to this piece there is also an, another electrical connector right here which will need to remove basically everything that here that's here in the front will need to be taken out let's start with this one and uh, yeah now we have just a little bit more space to see exactly what's going on and uh, yeah that's uh, that's it I will start this assembling and if everything goes as planned I'll show you with everything completely removed if not I will stop and uh, shoot another scene for the video explaining what was necessary in order to remove that okay I just want to show you something that proved to be a real pain in the butt. The removal of this bracket, so the top nut, it's a 10mm nut holding it in the top, that proved to be quite easy. The thing is that there is also, let me show you, right here underneath, so this is where the, the top nut goes and right underneath there is a T30 screw that bolts to the, to the intake. Right here in this piece in this place as you can see I don't have the screw because I dropped it and now it's on the it's in the belly pan of the engine but that was a real pain in the butt to remove and taking this bracket is imperative because it's basically it holds down the intake manifold to the engine hoist hook on this side so without removing that there is no way that you can do anything still uh, removing it is good because now we have a little bit more access to this uh, to removing the electrical connector for this motor right here you can't really see anything here in the dark but trust me there is an electrical connector there the same one as uh, the one on this side that I showed you earlier right there well once you get to this point you you see them both when I remove the the intake manifold I'll show you exactly the electrical connectors I mean it's just very difficult to show you now on the camera because it's super tight very cramped engine bay and uh, yeah that's uh, that's it though that bracket is removed there are no other brackets on this side so as far as I can tell, we're on the home stretch now. We're just removing a couple of electrical connectors, like this one right here and the other two. And we should be home free. I also managed to remove the torque flaps motor that was right here. As you can see, there are three screws holding it in. One, two and three these two on either side are quite easy to get to you just need a normal normal wrench and a t30 bit but the other one the lower one is uh, is a pain you really need to put your hand like this from this side and just torque it like this torque it out but anyway, that's out as well. And uh, now you can see this, uh, the entire thing is uh, pretty much ready to come out. There are a couple of more electrical connectors right there. And some right there as well that probably need to be removed. I guess at least. We'll see. I will start uh, trying to pull it out and if 
I hit a roadblock or something, I'll let you know. After a very, very long struggle, guys, I finally managed to take the intake manifold out. As you can see, it was these wires, these this bundle of wires that was making all of the trouble for me. And I really, really couldn't, couldn't get this out. Until I finally decided to stop working hard and start working smart. There are these two T30 bolts holding this. They look like this. And they hold it, I'll show you right now, right here underneath. Just remove here, sorry. Right here. When you take those out, the entire bundle of wires will stay behind. As far as I can see, these are for the knock sensors, so one, two, three, and four. If you have issues with the knock sensors, now would be the perfect time to actually tackle those. Anyways, with all of this finally, finally out of the way, we can assess what the issue is with my valves these gaskets they are metal gaskets these are reusable and they do seem to be in decent shape so I will not be changing those I'll just take them out very carefully not to damage them and we can assess what has happened here and I can already see something very interesting you can see right there there is a giant piece of plastic stuck on that inlet it's not really touching the valves but it's it's in there and it's probably been making quite some problems I'll very quickly take my needle nose pliers and grab that and we'll see what is going on. I shall leave the camera on just so that you can guys see exactly what I'm talking about. Actually quite lucky when this piece broke it hanged right there and didn't go inside the valves and damage everything and break everything inside the engine. Now I'll need to take a closer look at each and every one of them just to make sure that there are no other pieces just randomly floating about but if I'm lucky, it will be actually okay. Now that I'm checking the carbon buildup, it seems pretty normal. It's not, it's not extreme. I've seen worse. So it does look to be within the acceptable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we need to. To flash some light inside and just check what's going on and I uh, will I'll let you know what I find uh, just as a side note I did end up taking out uh, the left hand side fuel pump just because when I was wiggling out the intake manifold it was too big and I didn't want to so I couldn't actually remove that fitting right there for the low pressure fuel pump uh, fuel uh, pipe and uh, I needed the space in order to I basically lifted it up and that way in order for it to clear this uh, this fuel pump and the rail itself like I said the wiring was what gave me the most trouble because it's it's very hard to remove, especially this, this blue connector right here, because 
the tab that you have to press is actually underneath and you can't see anything not to mention that these plastic pieces are completely cooked and uh, yeah that makes the job that much more difficult anyway now that this is finally done we can start disassembling the intake manifold so there are screws they are again t30s all the way around it and there are also some that are underneath and i'll show you right now here here all the way around and here in the front here and right here oh there is also one hiding underneath this uh, this motor which you have to take out as well and uh, yeah we'll basically need to take all of these these flap motors and there are also one screw here underneath that I can see and probably one more on this side also hiding under there I will start disassembling this and uh, I'll let you know how it goes with most of the screws holding the motor removed you'll see that this screw falls right under where this arm is located so while I thought that you need to remove this and this these actually stay in place you don't need to touch those what you need to take out though is this little piece right here it's a little c-clamp holding this metal bracket on the inside so once it is removed you can just remove the lever swing it out of the way and then you will have access to this screw you can do the same to this side right here you can see the little clamp right underneath right there once that's removed you can take the entire motor out leaving these in place I have started to split the intake manifold. I've started here, right where this bigger screwdriver is right now. I started with the smaller one. Just put it right in there because as you can see here, there's a lot more room to put the screwdriver inside. And I have actually already, so the intake has already started to separate quite nicely. Right here, as you can see, it's still quite tight on the other side. And here as well. But it will, it will come apart. Just be careful when you do this and have a couple of screwdrivers and maybe a pocket knife ready. Just to wedge it inside and to prevent it from closing shut again. Uh, one more thing, when you are removing the little screws, the 30 screws, I think it goes without saying, but don't use a power tool on that. You will probably break those. Some of them are quite tightly inside. Just take your time to it all with hand tools. And oh, you can see now we have already a swirl flap right there. As you can see, this is not supposed to be there. It's supposed to be inside, but we'll get to that when we open it up. I finally managed to split the intake manifold apart and as you can see there is one flap randomly dangling out there and as you can see it's supposed to be here but it's not and we have also oh yeah we have a lot of damage here on this side like this flap is completely gone this is quite loose and gone so yeah we have a lot of a lot of broken things inside i will now unscrew all of the bolts that are around this and we'll finally see what the entirety of the damage to the flaps is with the screws removed and the runner laying right there we can finally assess the damage that occurred inside and uh, from what i can see there pretty much isn't isn't a flap that is uh, connected to anything so pretty much each flap is uh, 
is broken individually so I'm honestly quite surprised that everything was was still running in this engine but uh, yeah that is interesting indeed but we'll get this fixed so now with uh, with all of this removed sorry guys we had a motorcycle running sorry about the noise we had a motorcycle driving through um, so with all of this now removed we have to go ahead and clean everything up really really nice of the old oil carbon buildup and all of that other stuff we also need to piece this back as much as possible because we will be needing this because what will happen is that basically all of these little pieces will need to get glued in place with some epoxy so this is what needs to be done there is of course the possibility of removing these so completely breaking them off and removing them the thing is that if this is done and I've seen people complain on the Audi forums about this you get a rough idle and the engine will generally not run as smooth as it can possibly be at idle so once you have applied the gas and it's no problem but at idle it's it won't be that nice so we will lose the the variable runner length with the flaps glued in one position but it would still be better than running with absolutely no flaps at all so this is what I'm going to be doing I will be cleaning everything off really nicely and uh, when I'm done I will start to glue everything so basically every nook and cranny that there is around these flaps everything needs to be tight so that they don't come apart they don't come apart anymore and the engine stays running and healthy without plastic pieces going inside of it after removing the manifold and cleaning it up yesterday it got late and I decided to call it a day I uh, assessed the damage and uh, I did some further reading about whether flaps or no flaps is better and I actually found a document from Audi, the official Audi documentation about this engine I'm going to post a uh, picture of a screenshot of what they're saying about it in this insert here but basically what Audi says is that the flaps are in the so the flaps are in the short runner position the flaps are in the short runner position uh, at idle under a thousand uh, rpm and above four thousand so basically the flaps are closed only from 1000 to 4000 rpm meaning that the people that were complaining on the forums about Rafido without the flaps or with flaps deleted it couldn't have been related to this as the flaps are in the open position anyway at idle so sorry about the noise guys so considering that uh, the damage that my intake manifold sustained meaning that everything here is, is broken as you can see this is broken this piece was completely demolished here and there was only little fragments of it left I have actually decided to to remove the flaps I did a thorough cleaning I really was thinking about gluing them and uh, considering the the state of them I don't I'm not sure that the glue is going to hold and the last thing I want is bits of epoxy flying around in the intake and possibly damaging the engine so we'll be removing the flaps this will be done in the following procedure basically there are all these torques screws the 30s all around we remove them and then this inner section will come out and from the other side we'll be able to break the, the plastic welds that hold these uh, anchors in place 
this is what I'm going to do next. Here is what's left from the flaps. And here is everything put back together. As you can see it's nice and clean. There are no more plastic bits and pieces everywhere. Uh, just one thing, uh, make sure that there are no uh, no pieces left inside of here because where these plastic clothes are, these, they go from the back. The thing is they have like a, a little insert all around them and sometimes when you take the, the plastic rivet, when it pops out, the plastic insert stays in place and uh, just make sure you take all of them out you don't want bits of plastic flying inside the, the intake of the car you can see also here how these holes were elongated they were supposed to be like this and then they became like this that's why this is caused from rattle inside of the intake and when the flaps began to rattle inside, they were moving and they basically, they worked their way through, they ate up through the magnesium alloy that uh, this intake manifold is made of. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that's it. Now I'm going to have to clean everything up around here so these, these uh, seams where the new gasket will stay. I'll put everything back together that is related to the intake manifolds. Sorry about the noise. And um, put everything back together. And while that sits and uh, the silicone dries, I will move to cleaning up the carbon deposits from the engine. I have cleaned everything up nicely and now I have also put in the new silicone sealant. I'm using plain gasket maker that is at 300 degrees and basically you put it in the groove open. wherever there is a groove you just put it all around, around the bolts, around everywhere. I'm going to leave it to settle for about five minutes and then I'm going to put this thing on, this guy and then that as well on top and then we'll leave it to cure for a couple of hours. Here is now the intake manifold assembled. You can see there are some places where the gasket maker is coming through others where it seems that it has been just enough for the front because the front lever was broken I plugged it in with an M16 bolt and a nylock uh, nut on the other side so it doesn't come apart and I also filled the inside and the outside and the threads with the uh, gasket maker as well just so that it stays nice and sealed up other than that, that's pretty much it regarding the intake manifold. It is done. Now it's time to move to cleaning the, the engine from carbon. You see there are some coolant on there. It's not hasn't been leaking, it just it came out from the from the pipes put on these clamps but they don't seem to hold as tight as they're supposed to so I need to clean that up before assembling everything okay so now the time has come to finally start the Reassembly process. The first thing is to remove all of these rags and uh, clean a little bit all of this mess here that's inside the engine bay. Just pull everything apart and prepare 
the intake manifold to be dropped in its place. It's quite a bit of stuff here. I also have to clean all of this this water, this gunk that's here. So one pointer, do not tie this electrical loom back as uh, you'll just make it difficult for the next person that has to take the intake manifold out. So yeah, just don't do it. Leave them in place. Like they are dangling. That's good enough. It's no problem. And uh, yeah, we'll start assembling and I'll show you the process of reassembly as well. Okay, with everything relatively cleaned up, it's time to put on the gaskets that go underneath the intake manifold. So the one with part number ending at B is for this side, the right hand side of the car, right here, has these little pegs that have to find it up in place, and then the one with part number and you get E, goes this side, just like that, and the pegs line up in the bottom. Now it's a matter of putting the intake manifold in its place, but before we do that, we also need to put in the motor that goes right here that controls these lower flaps. So we'll need to reassemble that, it's just three screws, and if you remember we also took out a couple of small little C-shaped retainers holding the metal arms to these uh, sensors. These are the position sensors. They uh, let know the car in which position these lower flaps are. So something else that we need to attach to the intake manifold before we put it in is this right here. And this attaches right here. This goes inside. You can lubricate the o-ring before you put it in just so that it goes nice and snug and I see here there is a little bit of carbon which I'm going to clean and it's held in by a T30 screw. The intake manifold is in and uh, I've managed to put in the wiring for this sensor this motor here is the blue blue electrical connector and also the one that goes to this sensor uh, as a pointer for in order to plug in this electrical connector back in you will need to lift up the manifold otherwise there is simply not enough space for the connector to go around because of this uh, this wiring harness right here so do not bolt in the the manifold until everything is back together so put in the bolts right at the end just before you start finishing everything up because you would probably need the wiggle room around it to put in an electrical connector or two so these were in the front now what I'll need to do is uh, one more thing as you can see here I plug this uh, this hole that was for the arm coming from the electrical motor up here from my understanding, at least from the elect from the documentation of Audi, this motor itself, this one right here, which was actually causing the the huge vacuum leak at the beginning, is not connected to the computer of the car. So basically, it gets uh, it moves in accordance to RPM alone. So it's not really connected to the computer and shouldn't so the car shouldn't know whether this is there or not you shouldn't be getting a check engine light with that unplugged so for now I'll leave it off and we'll see whether or not that is in fact the case or not I will update you on a later date on that for now we're leaving it off in the hole where where this thing was going which is broken I plug it in with a, with a bolt and I put a, lo a lot of sealant silicone RTV around it and inside the threads and pretty much everywhere so that's how that will be from now on 
Uh, the next thing is I will start in by putting the high pressure fuel pump on this side. Removing it was very easy. As you can see this is how the, the pump looks like. There are three very long Torx bolts. They're all the same size. And it just it basically goes one way. You can't really screw that up. Two bolts on one side, one bolt on the other side. I'll need both hands to do that and uh, I'll put that in and the other thing that I'll also do is finish up the the piping so the the fuel lines I'll put that put those in as well I would also like to add that when putting the fuel pump you will need to have constant pressure on top of it because there is a spring inside so it is spring loaded and otherwise you won't be able to put in the, the screws as it is spring loaded don't just put in one screw and mesh it all the way to the bottom just work your uh, work around in a circular pattern all the way around until all screws bottom out simultaneously otherwise it might go at an angle and there is an o-ring inside which might get damaged or pinched and you'll get a fuel leak so the fuel lines are now all in place, they're all tightened with fuel lines, just double check, triple check, quadruple check, just check them and do that all over again because you don't want fuel spraying inside your engine bay at all. So yeah, just check all of the fittings there, there, all of them. The next thing is... I'm going to put in the, the PCV, the PCV valve, because that will be in the way and I don't want it to be dangling right there. So it has two screws, one here, one here. I have already pre-put the bolts so that I don't forget where they are and what size they are. So these are the T30s. Just I'll take this out, put this in and put the screws back in, in place. And after that, I will also put in the the water lines, these two water lines here and here, where they were supposed to be going. So, the PCV system is back in place, so at least the PCV valve is back in place. I have also put in these uh, two hoses. This vacuum line is back in and plugged in. We have this is um, I searched for it. It's actually the this is the low fuel pressure uh, sensor. It says whether the fuel pressure is adequate or it isn't. And uh, here we have these two sensors plugged in. This the both of the fuel pumps are plugged in. Now what is left to be done is basically reroute all of these uh, cables. This is the cam sensor right in place. And these vacuum lines I also put in this little bracket that was held in here by the 10 millimeter nut. And it also has a T30 bolt holding it underneath. I'll also route that. But yeah, we're... We're slowly and steadily coming to an end with this. I will give you another update when I have a little bit more of the engine put back together. Hey guys, just a quick update. So now the engine is put all back together, it runs fine. I already test drove the car. Everything seems to be in order. Haven't had any issues, no fuel leaks. That uh, quadruple check of the fuel lines paid off, which is really good. I uh, did that end up putting back the, this actuator here in the front. It didn't cause a check engine light, but then I scanned uh, the, the car for fault codes, the engine. I got one of those fancy VCDS scan tools and it was throwing a code for the, the missing actuator. So I just put it back in, I just put in one bolt in the top in case I need to take it off again for something. It doesn't need all the three bolts and I removed the actuator arm as you can see there is no actuator arm itself connected to here. 
so that's uh, that's basically it the car seems to be quite happy I don't have any idle issues everything is in order it runs perfectly so yeah we can consider this uh, DIY completed and successful if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and uh, if you want to see more from this car and some of the other cars that I have subscribe and stay tuned thanks for watching